All right, so now that you know how to work with file handling, I thought I should show you how to work with databases, like real databases, okay? Um, in my case, I would I want to start by showing you how to work with SQLite, okay? Then maybe later on, I'll show you how to work with Postgres SQL. I'm not going to show you how to use SQL, but I'm going to show you how you can connect your Python to your SQL or your database, and then you write or read from it, okay? The rest of the SQL part is a different language altogether, so you'd have to learn it on a separate video. All right, so let's see. Um, to work with uh, SQLite, there's, for those using Anaconda Spider, you don't need to install SQLite 3, okay? But those using other um, um, IDEs like VS Code or um, Vim or I don't know which one you're using, but some of them you would have to specifically install SQLite 3, okay? So I am just simply going to import it because I already have it because I'm using Anaconda Spider. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so... If you have it, let's start by creating. Um, so I'll just create a database file. Okay, so create a database file. And how do you create a database file? I'll just say connection equals to SQLite 3 or SQLite 3 like this dot connect like this. Okay, so if I say dot connect, it's going to also, it works like just like a file handling, it's going to try to create a database for me with the name I'm going to pass to it, okay? So I'm going to say, uh, what database I'm going to create? Let's create a database of um, 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 persons, okay, persons. So I'm going to say persons dot SQLite like this, all right? Uh-huh, oh, sorry. Okay, so if you do this, Basically, what you're going to have is um, then I'm, at the end of every connection, you should always have a connection dot close. All right, it's always essential so that your database is not uh, so that you should you can be able to delete or do whatever to your database. If you don't do that, you you realize you want to delete something. They will tell you that file is being opened in another environment or something like that. So it's always important to have the start and end. Okay, so always try to do that. So if I run this, I'm going to have um, let's see, persons.sqlite, okay, so currently my PC, I've not installed any software that can interpret it as a database, so it's open, it. it's going to view it as a txt file, okay, but even though the extension is .sqlite, all right, so now that you have your connection to your database, what do you do, don't worry, at the end of this, I'll show you how databases look like, if you don't know how they look like, so, now that you have your connection, databases or the connection has something called a Kesa, okay? So if I say connection, oh, connection.kesa, like this. The connection has something called a Kesa, and the Kesa allows you to be able to do stuff to your database. It allows you to be able to interact with it, so I'll just call it CUR Kes, or yeah, it allows you to be able to interact with your database. Okay, it's like your Kesa. It's like this Kesa that allows me to click here, click here, click here. So it allows you to be able to interact with your database or SQL. Okay, so it's with this Kesa that we'll be doing our stuff. Okay, so I could start by saying Kesa dot execute. Then over here, this execute takes parameters. Okay. One parameter is an SQL string, and the other parameters, well, those are extra parameters you can add to it. They are optional. So for the SQL string, I'm going to put something like this, and I'm going to say create. So this is SQL. If you don't know SQL, uh, I'm sorry, you would have to take a quick look at it. It's not complicated like other languages, and I don't want to say it's very broad. It's not so broad. It just has basic stuff. If you know them, you can learn the rest by yourself, all right? So create table. These are keywords, okay? It's like an important thing. It's just like using def when you're creating a function. So create table, then the name of your table. So I'll call the table person. Persons like this, okay? Then I will tell SQL to give me columns inside my table. So my first column will be name, okay? 
and my so name it will have the column type or the column data type as a text type okay so let me just make it capital so all those that are capitals are keywords all right let me put it that way now sql doesn't really care if you are using capitals or small or you're mixing them up okay some sqls some um some ides don't mind but to be on the safer side just try and be consistent if you're using caps use caps all right so the name of this um, this column will have uh, the person will have a name and i'm always going to put text inside it so text is seen as a string in sql and let's say he will have an age and for the age i'm going to put an int right and he will have a height and for the height i'll put a real number there right like this hope that makes sense so it's going to create um a table called persons and it's going to give them name age height as columns all right we will come and we'll fill these columns into um into um the the database all right so now that it's done creating i can just so let's exit and then um and um oh what's this and i'm just going to run so if i click on run let's see if it works uh create table persons oh okay it already exists yeah so it's it's already existing so you can either try to put this in a try catch statement in a try accept statement or yeah so basically that's it so i'm going to before i run this code i'm going to run another code because i want it to delete okay i want it to delete the first one because the first one doesn't have any table with headers like this so i want you to delete the first one so i'm going to say execute um drop table if exists and i'll give you the name of the table persons like this all right so it's going to drop the first table it's going to check if it exists it will drop the table then it's going to um run um it's going to run again by creating a new table this time it's going to give it headers all right so let's try that okay good so it's been able to do it unfortunate thing is you can't really um, view it because text file can't display such kind of data all right so what you just gotta know is it's working um i'll show you why why i'm saying it's working so i'll show you why i'm saying it's working don't worry so now that these two files are created i don't really need them because i don't want them to be clashing again I don't want this one to keep deleting and I don't want this guy to keep um, creating a new database. All right. So I'm just going to comment them out. Now, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to. So you remember um, the other script where I showed you how to um, import data into um, Python from a, um, from a CSV or um an excel sheet so let's just try that i have this data here let me look for it i hope it's still there um it's also my desktop right folder 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 good i have this folder here all right so this folder has i'm going to right click on it and i'm going to select um copy as path because i want s file path okay so i'm going to bring s file path here and i'm going to call it path like this Okay, so over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this file as CSV. So I'm going to call it data equals to read. Oh, I need pandas, right? So import pandas as pd like this. Okay, so I'm going to say pd over here. I'm going to say pd dot read. This is a CSV file. So I'm going to say read CSV as path or from path. And when you read it, I want the column names. Now this CSV contains data like this, data that we've already structured. So um, it contains ages, names, and heights. So, okay, it's open. Let me just open it for you. You can see that it contains names, ages, and heights. Okay, so I'm going to, what we're going to do is we're going to read the data from this Excel and we're going to put it inside our SQLite database. How about that? Okay, so I'm going to close this and proceed. So names equals to um, data. So I need it as a list, right? So I'll put inside a list. Data dot iloc, all right? 
Um, um, data dot lock read everything in column zero okay and i'm just going to repeat this for the next one the next one is called ages right and the last one is called heights like this so this one will be reading from column one and the next one will be reading from column two all right so we've been able to read i'm going to put them into a zip okay so i'm going to call it z a zip is um a data structure that allows you to look through several different lists at the same time or at the same index so i'm just going to say zip inside a zip i'm going to pass these indices and um, these um, lists into its heights like this heights like this all right so now if i have been able to add these heights to it i have a zip so now i can um now decide to loop through the zip and then add them to my database okay so now i have a zip here now now that i have a zip here a zip is just like saying um a zip is just like saying for n in names for a in ages for h in heights you know um print n h uh a like this except that this is not the right way of doing it because it will not give you what you want it's going to give you it's going to give you values from different indices okay so if you want them you just put them inside a zip like this and then you run so now let's try to add it to our database so i'm going to put the comment here. i'm going to say writing to the database okay so we have our zip here we are going to look through our zip so i'm going to say for n which is name a which is age h which is height and zip okay so we need to look through it uh, we need to look through it before we can append so for all this data in zip now i'm going to say keza.execute it means i'm going to append them so keza.execute then i give our sql code so our sql code is insert into like this then the name of the table you want to put so person the name table is called persons it's called persons right it's called persons right yeah the name of the table is called persons so insert into persons persons has three columns right the first column is what name second is age third is height like this okay insert into persons these column names then i want to insert these values question mark comma question mark comma question mark and remember i said sql takes parameters or this keza execute keza takes parameters so i'm going to say inside this uh, let me just finish and then i'll explain okay so what do we have here i'm saying that if i look through this list okay insert into the person's table the person's table has three columns name age height these values and these are the values i've put outside here by placing them with question marks okay so insert into these columns these values and um i think basically that's all right so that's how you write to a database so let's just run it this time and see it's an error type object for n a in zip sorry in z not zip it's called z not zip so i'm going to clear this and i'm going to run it again all right so it was successful it means it has been able to write okay it's been able to write so since it's been able to write let's try to read how about that so i'm going to comment this one out because i don't need to write again okay so i'm going to try to read i'm going to say reading from the database or accessing the database info or something so for reading you still use the cursor all right so cursor dot execute okay so it's the execute you're basically using to run all your sql codes so in in order to select or get information from a database you use this query select star okay from 
person like this okay oh. so select star from person like this and it's going to return so i'm going to call it rules because it's going to return a list of rules right okay so i'm going to say since it's going to return a list of rules i can say for r which is for row in rows print r like this hope that makes sense so let's run uh no such person persons persons now when it reads it's you have you give it an option either to fetch just one of the options uh, whether to fetch one or to fetch all now we're going to use the fetch all option okay and so when you run fetch all it's going to fetch all of them and append them to this okay as a list and then you're going to look through it and you're going to print each of the data okay so let's just try it again and let's see um we can see that it's giving us information so you can run if you use star like this it's going to give you everything inside the database so i'm going to clear and i'm going to run again if i use star it's going to give me the name the age the height name age height name age height name age height all right <laughs> wow okay so yeah that's basically how it works and at the end of the day try to always close okay so one tiny thing i forgot to mention well it's not tiny it's very important that's why I, i'm telling you now i forgot to mention it because well i don't really know why i didn't remember to mention it but after you add data to um why did we add data right writing data so after you add data to an sql database or any kind of file okay that's a database um one of its life cycles is you have to commit okay so you have to put something like um connection so connection it's called connection here dot commit okay now i think i remember um you realized when we we had issues it was not displaying anything it was because the database was empty even though we claim we added data to it um when you finish adding data to your database you have to add this function or this um, line of code so that it will save it it's more like saying save okay so connection dot commit this would force it to save the data so that whenever you come back you can always read it okay so yeah basically that's what i wanted to mention and i totally forgot so basically now you know how to access information from a database so you could actually just gotten you could have gotten it like this if you wanted to access only their ages so you could just say access age okay like this and then instead of printing it out you could have maybe appended it to a certain variable and then used it to do your calculation or whatever you have to do with it but basically that's how it works so over here i want to show you how a database this postgres database we'll be doing a little a little more on postgres database um, in the coming um, videos but um, that's how a database works it's working on a local server and postgres sql okay and i have a database like this assignment and inside this assignment i have my schema okay schema called ghana and this schema contains several database uh, several tables so i have various 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 tables under it and um so basically that's how it works these are tables and each table contains information like this so you can see that oh uh, you can see that this table contains all this info right uh what am i doing this table contains all this info it has all this data assigned in a form of an excel sheet so basically when you're working with databases just imagine it as as you're working with a data a spreadsheet or an excel sheet okay yeah basically that's all i wanted to know about sql database so the rest is i would like to know what cool things you plan to do with it or what cool things you've been able to do with it all right